Right. Okay, great. Okay. Uh, in our last lectures, we spoke about uh, ideal versus non ideal solutions. And just to uh, take, take a stock of what we had talked about, um, and I, in liquid interactions, we spoke about two kinds of solutions. Uh, one is ideal solution, and the other one is non ideal solution. And the uh, attributes of ideal solution is that. Uh, the component activities uh, similar to the mole fraction of uh, any component in the solution. And uh, there is no change in the enthalpy when two solutions or two components mix uh, to form a solution. Right? Uh, so that means it, it says there is no uh, interaction between uh, the, the different components when they come into solution. And that's why uh, it's sort of reflected here. The enthalpy change is zero. But there is a uh, positive change in the free energy of mixing of the solution. I should not have written, written an I here because this sort of takes a summation of that. And that is Xi ln Xi and summed up over all components multiplied by RT. And this, you know, is a positive quantity. And this is because of the fact that there is, cha there is a change in the entropy of the mixing, and that is primarily uh, on, on the configurational part. When two components mix, uh, they randomize the uh, distribution process, distribution of both the components in the whole solution, which is the reason for the increase in uh, uh, entropy, which results in, in the uh, change in free energy. If the free energy change is, neg is negative, uh, did I say positive before? No, it should be negative. The free energy change is negative and the entropy change is positive, right? And there is no enthalpy contribution and AI remains e equivalent to uh, mole fraction. And these attributes are uh, so sort of uh, given in the Raoult's law, right? And when we talk about solutions uh, which don't obey Raoult's law, uh, that that's you know, the deviation from ideality where uh, the, the change is that the activity now is not equal to a mole fraction. Right? And you sort of relate this term as AI is equal to gamma I XI term called thermodynamic activity coefficient that comes into play. And unlike in the ideal solution, the enthalpy change upon mixing is non-zero. It means there is some kind of interaction that happens between A and B. And that's the reason it doesn't obey Raoult's law. So if, if that were to be uh, explored further, the next thing is that if there is a deviation, can, can we in, in some ways uh, quantify that deviation? How far it will deviate from, from Raoult's law? Um, that, that, that's, that's a challenge. And for that, we, we introduce a term called the regular solution model. Right, so ideal solution. And a regular solution model. Okay. Now, uh, to to get deeper insights, in, in, in particularly in the, in the quantifying behavior of, of regular solutions, uh, one term is introduced, which is called the excess thermodynamic quantity, and it's a very simple one. And if if there is a deviation from Raoult's law, uh, then how how much it deviates? Okay. And for that, if you talk about any thermodynamic parameter, thermodynamic property. And you need to find out the excess quantity of that particular thermodynamic property. Let's say the thermodynamic property is Q. Okay. In, in this leak, where it says that the excess property is something which is what the property uh, has a value um, normally, right? And what the property would have a value if the solution were ideal, right? And the difference between that is the excess property. It's as simple as that. This is the actual thermodynamic property, its value. And this is QID is the value of the thermodynamic property if the uh, if the solution were an ideal one. Right. So the, the difference between them is called the excess thermodynamic property. And instead of Q, if we write uh, 
free energy, Gibbs energy, molar Gibbs energy, then we could write a G excess is G minus G I D. And these all of these things are upon mixing. So with this, uh, we actually define something like a G excess. Okay. Now it says that the regular solution we can define with something which where the enthalpy change upon mixing is non-zero. That means there is some kind of a change in enthalpy. All right. Yet uh, the entropy change upon mixing is equivalent to what it would be when the solution was um, an ideal solution. That means the del S I M is del, del S upon mixing in this case, in the regular solution case itself, is equal to the del S upon mixing if the solution were ideal. That means the entropy change in the regular solution model is similar to the entropy change in the ideal solution model, which is equivalent to the configurational entropy. Now it's only only based on the distribution of A and B atoms or the constituents constituent atoms of the liquid in the solution mix, which is uh, simply minus R ln X I. Right. And it, so if, if there is a del H which is non zero, but del H which is equivalent to the ideal case, that has to be when we, when we talk about uh, the Gibbs energy change in the regular solution model, then you would see that it is slightly different than the Gibbs energy change that would be in, a, in an ideal solution. All right. So that is captured in the, in the thing that this G excess is equal to G, the Gibbs energy in the regular solution model minus the Gibbs energy in the ideal solution model, and that is the excess property. And you'll see that this excess property is actually equivalent to the enthalpy change upon mixing in an ideal in, in a regular solution. All right now, <clears throat> so this G excess is the additional term, the excess term that we get from the delta G upon mixing in a regular solution and the delta G upon mixing if the solution were ideal. And this delta G, you can write it del H minus T del S. Okay, which is how you can write del H upon mixing minus T del S upon mixing. And this is for the case of a regular solution. And likewise, you can uh, uh, write this term as uh, uh, del H upon mixing minus uh, T uh, del S upon mixing in an ideal solution. Right. So since del S upon mixing and del S upon mixing in an ideal solution is the same thing, then it turns out that G excess is simply equivalent to the enthalpy change upon mixing in a regular solution. Okay. And then if you want to simplify this, you, you know that AI is gamma I XI. And this is um, which is coming from the deviation from Raoultian behavior. We have introduced the term gamma I. OK, now the del G upon mixing, um, if we write that is RT summation of XI ln AI. Right, that, that's a del, del G upon mixing. And in, in AI, now we can introduce the terms gamma I and XI, which will actually uh, split up this, this, this function into two functions, which is RT XI ln XI plus RT XI ln gamma I. Right, but you know that the del G part in an ideal solution mixing, the del G mixing in an ideal solution is RT XI ln XI. That would mean that this part is equivalent to this XI ln, ln gamma I. Know that that's the change. So, so therefore, we can write this G excess, the excess solution gives energy is a combination of the terms of RT XA ln gamma A and XB ln gamma B. It's actually written here in a summation form like this. And for bi uh, for binary liquid, we can write RT XA ln gamma A plus XB ln gamma B. And accordingly also, you can write this uh, excess Gibbs energy uh, for, for the solution is a combination of um, excess energy of partial excess energy of the term of the component A and partial excess uh, free energy from the term B. And you can write an equation where it is 
XA parts of GA axis and XB parts of GB axis is what fully gives you the uh, molar excess free energy. Now, uh, for the two to uh, quantify these uh, uh, sir, I'm in a lecture. I'll, I'll call you in one second. So uh, yeah, if we define uh, to to quantify further, you know, we have uh, come with a term called the Margulis coefficient, which actually connects this gamma i and xi. And the generic term is ln gamma i divided by one minus xi square, and this is a finite term. Actually, you can define alpha for each of the component, but then I'm not going to the discussions of that. It eventually, turns out that. This is generic quantity, smart risk coefficient. And based on that, you see that um, uh, you, you get uh, from the works of Margulis and Hildebrand and Van Laag uh, from the uh, real gas theory and the, uh, from the Van der Waals equation, which is, if you look at it, the Van der Waals equation is the formation of uh, an, a, an equation of state uh, de derived for real, uh, for real gases and which is taking corrections onto the idle gas behavior. Likewise, Van Laar took uh, notes and, and he derived, he pretty much applied the same way and applied the idle gas, idle solution theory and made some corrections onto that and uh, got expressions which are applicable to the real, gas, real solutions, which is the regular solution model. And based on that, we kind of defined the Margulis coefficient alpha with the terms of thermodynamic activity coefficient and the mole fraction in, in the uh, solution state uh, uh, as for this, which is, uh, so, sir, I'm in a lecture, I'll call you a little. So I'm in a lecture, I'll call you a little later. So, uh, so th this is with thermodynamic activity coefficient and, and the mole fraction are connected with the term ln gamma a is alpha x b square and ln gamma b is alpha x a square. So this is interdependent quantities that we are talking about in a, bin in a binary solution. And, and, and you know that the since the excess free energy is rt x a ln gamma a is x b ln gamma b, you can simply write the term, uh, reorganize the term as instead of ln gamma a, if you put alpha x b square, and instead of ln gamma b, if you put alpha x a square, you will get the term rt alpha x a x b square plus rt alpha x a, or this x a square. There's a little bit of different uh, problem here. This should have been x a square x b. It's a mistake. And, and then you, you take rt alpha x a x b is common, and then you'll find that there's a term called x a plus x b, uh, which is nothing but one. So it sort of reduces to the form R T alpha x a x b. Now, since this alpha is there and R T are kind of constants uh, for a particular temperature, you, you can uh, write the whole term as some another number, another quantity, which is alpha prime. So you can simply write uh, the, this quantity G x s is alpha prime x a x b. Uh, which is a fairly simple uh, expression for finding out the excess free energy. And you know that this is the term which actually tells you about the interactions that the A molecules and B molecules would have in, in a regular solution uh, when they are mixed. Okay. Now, uh, there, are, there are very many ways of finding out what is this alpha prime term and what its values are, right? And uh, a simple statistical model can be uh, thought of as to, you know, in a, in a component, in, in a mixture, when you have A component, B component mixed together, A atoms would be surrounded by B atoms or B atoms would be surrounded by A atoms in a, in a, in a, in a solution state. But before the solution state also, we'll talk about liquid A and it has A atoms surrounded by A and B atoms surrounded by B atoms. There is something called uh, a coordination number, which is, um, you know, the, how many atoms of A are around A or of B are around B. And in a mixed state, what, what 
happens to that number, the coordination number, when A is perhaps surrounded by a uh, combination of A and B, and the, uh, um, you know, the number slightly changes and all that. But more importantly, uh, I think there is an, an interactions with um, the, the, there's energy of interaction between AA molecules and BB molecules, and in a mixed state, possibility of interaction between A and B molecules. If you are able to quantify these numbers, then based on the statistical model, we can make an attempt to, to find out this number and which is given here in this case. Right? And yeah, that's what it says. And, and it's, so this gives uh, the excess gives energy, which is the enthalpy of change, uh, the change of uh, enthalpy for mixing. It's, it's a number RT alpha XA XB, and which is again de defined in the statistical model by a term called omega XA XB. Right? And this omega is called the effective bond strength. And if you look at it in the last uh, slide, we had seen that this alpha prime number, which is alpha RT itself, and which is what is given here, this omega is, is the term alpha RT. Okay. And the, the concept of omega can be understood um, based on the number of AB bonds that you could have or the number of AA bonds or BB bonds in the solution you have. And if we take a mole of a liquid uh, which comprises of some part, let's say half of mole of A and half mole of B, and they are initially at clean states, that means A is fully A and B is fully B, and they are allowed to mix with each other. And then how can you calculate the effective bond strength is, is simply an approach uh, as it's given here. You could see that this is a formula which is based on the fact that you could have uh, so many AA type of bonds and so many BB type of bonds and upon mixing you have some number of AB type of bonds. And based on that, if we know the, uh, the, the strength of each bond, each bond meaning uh, each type of bond. You know, if you have a strength of, of, of AA type of bond defined by the term EAA, which is, of course, a negative quantity, but there's an you know, effective uh, sort of um, attraction bond that uh, happens, that exists between AA molecules. Likewise, you have BB kind of bonds, which exist between BB molecules. And upon mixing, if you're able to form AB bonds, and there's a certain uh, interaction with them, you have the EAB e, e, bonds, which is again a negative quantity, but then signifies the hetero bond strength. Okay. Now, in this uh, organization uh, of, of uh, different types of atoms, the two types of atoms A and B, how can you calculate the effective bond strength, the omega, is just simply by a bond counting method. And the bond counting method tells you that, you know, if Z, Z is uh, the average coordination number. This is the average coordination number of e, AB or AA or AB, or BB kind of interactions multiplied by the uh, Avogadro's number, right? Um, then you, you, can, you can see the change in uh, the type of interaction that you're having. And this part actually tells you about the homotype interactions or the interactions within uh, its own uh, constituents, which is EAA plus EBB, and the average so EAA plus EBB by two sort of indicates the average homotype interaction, and EAB it tells you about the average um, heterotype interaction, right? And since these two numbers are positive. You know that NAV is a positive number and Z is also a positive number. So if uh, the algebraic sum of these terms, if it is negative, that means, you know, if, if the, the, this, is, this has a larger number and, and this is a smaller number, this is a larger number and this is a smaller number, then this is uh, going to be coming the positive value. But then when we, uh, actually put the um, sign of this bond, which is a negative sign, that means this whole thing would be a negative bond strength, and that would mean that uh, the EAB interactions are stronger. 
okay and that would give you a negative deviation All right on the on the other hand if you see that the homotype interactions are stronger that means this is a larger number not not talking about the negative part of it because all of these bonds are negative bonds uh, if this number is a larger number than this number then this whole number is is going to be uh, a negative number and you assign the negative part of the, the bond energies which makes this uh, omega a positive number which actually makes you um, makes that you know omega is positive and that would sort of lead to positive interactions i mean positive deviation from Raoult's law where ea the homotype bonds are are more effective so that this this one and uh, can can actually indicate to you uh, quant quantified numbers of, of those interactions because from uh, basic physics you can know the z the z of each of this um, uh, a b or a a type of um, interact a a type of materials and 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 Avogadro is of course there and if you're able to take a mole of that substance you can actually theoretically calculate what could be the uh, bond strength all right and uh, based on that of course you could should be able to calculate the um, the 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 enthalpy change partial mo partial molar enthalpy change from one component upon upon mixing which is simply the omega into xb square and uh, the other del h b upon mixing the, the partial enthalpy change of component B upon mixing is omega into x e square. If you actually expand it, you know that this, this part is there, right? Okay. So G x s, which is the del H itself, is x a g a x s, and we are talking about this one now, right? And you could see that is x a x b square sigma, uh, sorry, omega is the term is, that's why if you uh, simplify this term, this is what it is, right? And of course, we 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 understand more of it when we do a solved example of um, some different types of solutions. Talk about maybe lead or with something tin or lead, and then nickel and cadmium or uh, something of that sort. When we take exact numbers, handbook numbers from um, you know from physics data, of what what is the um, coordination number and what is the uh, energy of uh, nickel and cadmium uh, then we should be able to follow and then calculate what's the effective bond strength which is something we will we'll, uh, do in maybe in subsequent classes sometime we'll solve a couple of examples of, of these uh, real solutions or regular solutions right likewise I, I just want to introduce one term just a small term which is called sub regular solution which is again for the correction of what we have come to know as a regular solution and in in the regular solution model we have we've seen that the the bond strength the effective bond strength uh, omega uh, that's that's sort of ind independent of composition say that you know if you are uh, talking about a and b uh, together mixing with 20 percent a 80 percent b or 50 percent a 50 percent b or the other way 80 percent a 20 percent b and all across the composition range between the in the binary solution we, we have assumed that the bond strength is is the same it doesn't really vary with different kind of um, compositions uh, but that's that's an assumption you know that um, uh, may happen you know may not be true as well when you have a, a, a different type of atoms uh, which is in a larger quantity let's say the a side of it let's say 80 percent a or 20 percent b certain interactions are uh, larger than the uh, case would be uh, with 20 percent um, uh, a and 80 percent b so the effective bond strength is actually um, a function of the composition it's a linear function of composition right? which is something written here as this bond strength can vary as a plus b x b as as you keep on increasing a particular uh, composition which is like say you're starting from all 100% A, and then you go at go adding XB, and you're chasing it. Then you know the 
this term, the effective bond strength of omega term would be changing. And uh, so effectively, the uh, the excess free energy power mixing, excess gives free energy power mixing, would, would have to be taken with this term, which is um, omega x a x b, which is an expansion of a plus b x b multiplied by x a x b. And where you can um, get these numbers a and b, which are actually um, uh, geometrical curve fitting uh, numbers that you derive from um, experimental data, and um, they actually don't tell anything physical about it, just that just they're fitting parameters. Right? So um, when we introduce these terms uh, and it, it fits well with, with experimental data, then we call uh, the solutions to be uh, some regular solution models. All right. So with this, I think uh, we are kind of done with solution thermodynamics in a uh, in a decent way, not very um, deep, uh, but at least on a superficial way, we know the terms of mm, uh, comfortable with the terms that has been introduced and the um, the physicality of uh, the terms that have been used in in the you know calculations and all that. What is left, perhaps, is uh, to solve a few numericals uh, to be able to uh, appreciate the whole concept uh, well, and then put some numbers in, into our calculations uh, to get a feel of you know what numbers are. Mm, um, coming out from from the problem that we do. And uh, I, I think that would give you a decent idea about, um, you know, assimilating the ideas that we have covered as of now. Um, so we'll do that in the next class. We'll solve about three, four problems, um, solution thermodynamics. And then we'll be left with a topic which uh, which is the um, interaction of gases with contents materials which is either liquids or solids and how do they interact with gases and typically carbon dioxide or carbon monoxide or oxygen and how that affects the high temperature behavior of materials right with this i think uh, the lecture part is over we'll uh, take some questions let me stop the recording